if you're thinking about the long game and you're not focusing on this quick, instant result, because spoiler alert, that doesn't exist in the podcasting space. You have to think about the long-term value you're bringing to the world. And if you keep your focus there, you're going to go far and accomplish big things. Welcome to another episode of Listeners to Lead, where I'm helping podcasters launch and maintain a lead generating show. I'm your host, Alicia Galati, the CEO and head podcast strategist behind Galati Media, a full service podcast management company. On this show, you'll hear my guests and I discuss everything it takes to launch a successful podcast and keep it running. If you're ready to get leads, land speaking gigs, and create deeper connections with your audience through your podcast, then this is the show for you. Today on the podcast, we have Jason. Jason and I are talking about all things podcast guesting, podcast hosting, really being able to show up authentically and in integrity. And when you are pitching to take your ego out of it and actually show up with value in the pitch as well as in the conversation, you're going to want to listen to this episode. I know we talk about podcast guesting and pitching and how important it is in growing your listenership. But Jason gives some really unique tips that I think you're definitely going to want to listen to. All right. Without further ado, join me in welcoming Jason to the podcast. Hello, Jason. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm so excited. We have already started like dropping troops in the green room. So you're like, hey, we need to press record now. So if you could start by telling everyone who you are, what you do, and about your podcast. Alicia, thank you so much for having me. I can always tell when the conversation is going to be good. If we're already dropping bombs of value before we even hit record, it's a good indicator that we've got some good stuff ahead. So stay tuned, everybody. So as Alicia said, my name is Jason Sircone. I have worked in the podcasting industry for nearly a decade as we sit and talk today. I help people launch shows. I've launched or hosted my own shows, worked with people on the hosting strategy side, the guesting strategy side. My ultimate goal is to help people understand that you don't need to overcomplicate podcasting. There's so much value built within this platform, whether you're a host, a guest, or a hybrid, and you're doing both to grow your brand and push your efforts forward. But so often we get just blindsided by all of these obstacles and hurdles that don't really need to be there. So I try to bring clarity and purpose wherever I can. So when I'm making guest appearances, when I'm hosting my show, it's all about bringing the value. My show, as we sit and record in March of 2023, is known as Evolution of Brand. And that show is all about building an authentic, undeniable personal brand. And it's funny, I'm in this as we talk. Like, And this is what's funny, because I know this is coming out at a different time. I'm launching, and it's an old podcast that I'm rebranding as Podcast Guesting Simplified. Is it live yet? I don't know. Go look up on the Apple Podcasts and on your podcast app and see if it's live. Because as I said, I'm in the process of making a couple tweaks and changes to bring my old podcast back with a new name. But ultimately, that show is going to be teaching simple tips and strategies from people that are leveraging podcast guesting in a very powerful way and using it to grow their brands. I want to help everybody understand that you don't have to make this hard. There's a lot of value built into it if you come at it with a strategy and you focus on doing things right. So that's a little bit about where I'm at in the podcasting space today. Yeah, and you've definitely been doing it a bit longer than I have. I've, I've been listening to podcasts since about 2015 and started my own in 2018. But that love for podcasting just grew so yeah. fast. And it's such a powerful medium. And I really want to try to see if I can find someone who understands the psychology of why podcasting works, right? And so like have someone on, we need to talk about this because the like memory and the way that people associate something they heard with what they were doing during that time is so powerful. And yeah. it's not something that can happen as much with blogs, videos, or things like that. So I love podcasting. And I think it's so important, especially as you have seen the evolution of podcasting and how it's changed and shifted over time. There are certain things that have stayed true, right? And that is, it takes effort 
mm-hmm. to create a quality show. And that's why 90% of people don't make it past 25 episodes at all because mm-hmm. they go into it and they think, this is going to be great. I'm going to make lots of money. And <laughs> Wait, where are all those thousands of downloads that I was expecting? So I'm sure you've seen people have those thoughts and feelings. Yeah, it's... It's very unfortunate. We can laugh at it. And I think that, you know, and we, we were talking about before we started recording. I think the biggest problem that plagues the podcasting industry is that people have these very unrealistic expectations of what they can accomplish. And I don't know where they got them because I mean, I've talked to people like, Oh yeah, something I'll be like Joe Rogan. Okay. Cool. I'll talk to you in 20 some years yeah. because that's how long it took him. I mean, when you really think about the timeline. Of that man's career from where he started in comedy, more than likely in front of just a handful of people at a small comedy club, working his way up to television and acting and doing MMA and Fear Factor and news radio and all these things. And then he started his podcast, and I think he had it going for maybe a decade before he got the big payday because he showed that he was committed to building something truly special. Whether you like it or not, you you can't knock the guy's dedication to building something very powerful. I will speak to what you said about the psychology. And I mean, I'm no expert, but I believe the reason why people resonate with that type of content in such a powerful way in that audio format is because they are able to be doing something else at the same time. You hear a song come on. Like I, I have a song that every time it comes on, it's swallowed by Bush. Every time I hear that song, it takes me back to when I was a junior in high school and it came on when my now ex-girlfriend from a long time ago, we almost hit a deer and I had to swerve and we were all over the road and it was scary as hell. But every time I hear that song, that's my first memory. That was 20 to 30 years ago. I mean, I, I'm dating myself 20 some years ago, at this point. <laughs> but podcasting is the same way because you're able to listen in a passive nature. You've got blogs and you've got videos. You need to be in an environment where you can consume that content and get the most from it. And you usually, you can't be driving a car or you're, please don't do that. Don't drive on my roads if you're reading blogs and watching videos and driving. But with podcasts, you can drive, you can be on the bus, you can be walking the dog, you can be at the gym. And you have this extended period of time in somebody's ear. That's why I am, am such a proponent of podcast guessing and podcasting as a whole Because you're given this extended period of time to bring impact and value to somebody's world. And in a lot of environments in this rapid three-second attention span world of today, that's truly special. So if somebody is committing to listening to a podcast, they have you in their ear for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever the length of the show is. And in that time, if you're bringing impact and transformation to their world, They're going to put you back in their ear for your next episode, and then they're going to start binging all the stuff they've missed. So that, to me, it makes people resonate with this type of content in a very powerful, long-lasting way. And in a lot of ways, this content is building a legacy for you and your brand for a lifetime and beyond. You put your heart and your soul into your show. And I want to help you reach all of those potential listeners out there. That's why I'm excited to announce my upcoming podcast marketing workshop. It's about giving you practical tools to grow your audience. You'll learn the secrets to getting your podcast discovered, attracting your dream listeners, and boosting those download numbers. This workshop will be hosted live with a replay available on April 30th. You can sign up by going to galatimedia.com slash workshop. Let's grow our podcasts together. Yes, I 100% agree with that. I recently had a conversation with a client where she was, you know, she's coming up on 100,000 downloads, which is nice. incredible. Nice. First of that's, all. <laughs> like, yeah, that's phenomenal. So incredible. And she's been doing it consistently for the last three years, podcasting Mm. every single week, showing up with solo episodes almost exclusively every single week. And she was saying, oh, yeah, you know, this other person in my space who talks to a broader audience just hit a million downloads. And I was like... Okay, that's that's interesting. And we kept talking and I was saying, you know, have you talked to any of your followers lately? Have you, you know, had any interactions? She's like, yeah, 
One person said that she told her mom to start listening to me. Now her mom is quoting me to my friend saying, Barb said, da 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 Like, and then goes on and on about like all of these people that she's impacting and these conversations that she's having. And so I paused and I said, then why do the downloads matter? If your goal is to show up, bring value, change someone's life, and you're doing that, then who cares that so-and-so has a million downloads? Well, I'm with you there. I hate the download metric. To me, it's one of the biggest plagues on our industry. But that person that hit a million, guess what they needed to do first? Hit 100,000. Yep. It's all stepping stones. And consistency is going to get you there. And there is no rule that says you have to get there in a certain amount of time. The more value that you bring to the world through your podcast and the more you focus on bringing exceptional, engaging content that people really want to sink their teeth into, the faster you'll get there because people will tune in and hear a great show and they'll love what they're listening to. They'll start listening to past episodes. They'll subscribe so they don't miss future episodes. But most importantly, they'll turn to a colleague or a friend or they'll go to their social media circle and say, you need to listen to this podcast. I'm learning so much. It's so good. And then exponential growth kicks in and you're off to the races. There's no set formula on when that's going to happen, but you'll never experience it if you throw in the towel after a handful of episodes or you lack consistency in all of your practices. So your client's going to get there. It sounds like she's got the right mindset. And really, that's what it comes down to. If you're thinking about the long game. And you're not focusing on this quick, instant result because, spoiler alert, that doesn't exist in the podcasting space. You have to think about the long-term value you're bringing to the world. And if you keep your focus there, you're going to go far and accomplish big things. Yes. So we talked a little bit about being a host and the kind of impact you can make. But let's kind of switch gears here and talk about guesting. As a podcast host, one of the quickest ways the most effective ways to grow your show, I believe, is by being on other people's podcasts. Indeed. And that we've seen that over and over with our clients where they are on a really aligned show and it practically doubles their downloads. Really mm -hmm. great results, right? But you have to do it a certain way, right? Like there's some thought, <laughs> to put it quite frankly, that has to go into pitching, showing up, and giving value. So Tell us a little bit about, start with pitching first and foremost, because I know we both have like horror stories. Oh, man. I, I don't think there's a podcaster on the planet that doesn't have at least one horror story from the last hour about right. their pitches because it's brutal out there sometimes. And it's sad. I mean, I, I think we're, we're, we're talking about it a little tongue in cheek, but I'm taking it upon myself to try to eradicate this as much as possible because it's costing opportunities for people that truly do have value to bring, but their pitch or their presentation isn't honed in. And if you're not dialed into not talking about yourself, but talking about the value you can bring to that podcaster and letting them know why you feel their platform is a good fit for your message and why your message will impact that audience in a powerful way. Most podcasters are going to look at these presentations and just skim right over them because, Alicia, you know, it's podcasters. We get inundated with people yeah. that want to be on our show and podcasts that only release one episode a week. Well, they have 52 guest spots to give away per year. That's pretty coveted real estate. And of course, you know, if you do two episodes, you have 104, so on and so forth. There's our math lesson, but <laughs> we don't value that enough in the picture presentation and it shows. And that's where mm -hmm. I feel that. We have to get better in this regard, because if you can't get past the presentation phase or the pitch phase, you can't get to that point where you're going to join the show and make a significant impact on the audience or have a networking opportunity with the host that's in front of you. So to simplify the pitch, and I'm in no way, shape or form going to go into sales mode, but I have a course on my website that you can get the full breakdown of how this works, but you have to make it all about the podcaster, why you think their show is valuable. Find something within that content that truly brings an aha moment to your world and let them know about it. And don't do it in this canned copy and paste type of way from the show notes, because some people do that and it stands out. Believe me, I know what I wrote or I know what my writer wrote for the show notes. I don't need to see it spit back at me because you're calling that research. So 
on the front end, you've got to find the shows that align. And we should even, this precedes the actual pitcher presentation. You've got to find podcasts that align with your objectives. Because if you're reaching out to podcasts that have no value to you, or you can't bring value to them, nobody wins. And oftentimes, even if the podcaster were to take a, take a risk and, and say, okay, yeah, we'll bring you on. This looks interesting. We'll see. If your message is going to fall flat with the podcaster, it's going to fall flat with the audience. So you can nip that in the bud. And I would say most podcasters are pretty deliberate. They're looking at a presentation that stands out, but ultimately it's a person that can join them and add value to the content they're creating. So you have to find those shows in your initial research process. And then when you reach out your presentation, your pitch, I use both. I I don't like the term pitch, but I constantly find myself using it because it's the accepted vernacular in our space. Right. But that presentation needs to stand out in a way that a podcaster looks at and goes, whoa. Yep, that is the person I need to talk to because they're taking the time to talk about why they like what I'm doing, why they can add value to it, and why they are an asset to me before, during, and after the conversation on our show takes place. That stands out. And there's a number of ways to do that in written form, but you can also do it in video form. If you do it in video form, you're already, by default, going to stand out because so many people get into copy and paste mode and they send the exact same pitch any podcaster that's within a hundred mile radius. And sometimes they forget to change the name of the show. Sometimes they forget the name of the person, sometimes both. It's brutal. But if you simplify, I keep going back to simplifying. And if you simplify things, this isn't complicated. You can do a couple easy steps and it's going to help you get more guest appearances. And there's a magic line that is in my course It changed everything for me. It doubled the amount of positive responses I was getting when I was doing outreach. And when I really looked at it, I'm like, this is so simple. And it takes away ego and entitlement. And I'll wrap up with this. You do not know if you are the perfect guest for anybody's show. Only the podcaster themselves can determine that. Because so many pitches come across, I'm the perfect fit for your show. You don't know that. The podcaster knows their audience and their content more than you ever will, despite any amount of research that you do. So you have to make sure that you're taking ego and entitlement away from your presentation completely, bring value from start to finish, and that's how you're going to get more guest appearances. Yeah, I can think of a pitch that I recently received. Of course, it went straight to my junk mail because, you know, but I check my junk mail every once in a while to make sure that nothing got missed. You know, recently I was about to hire a copy editor to redesign our website and redo the copy on our website and all of her stuff went to my junk so i've been making a point to make sure i check there but sadly i came across this pitch and of course the first line made me click on it and it was like hilarious you are not gonna want to miss out on this opportunity and it's like first of all don't tell me what to do i'm an adult (laughs) also is there some african prince who like has millions of dollars for me what's up with this (laughs) But it was a pitch of, hey, this person would be the perfect guest on your, Mm because of course it said listeners to leads on it. And like, they would be the perfect guest, blah, blah, blah. blah, And this is why. And I'm just like, don't demand that I do this. (laughs) It's not how you send a pitch or the ones that have been, hello, sir. Like on all of my social media, my she, her pronouns are there. (laughs) Yeah. I've been getting hello, dear. What? So you're getting sir, I'm getting dear. They're both terrible in a professional environment, but why? Why are we getting this? Oh, good times, good times. <laughs> this is something I've been noticing about a couple pitches. One in particular that I'll tell the story about because I tried to take it a step further and help. So many of these pitches lately, have they read like obituaries. And it's it's sad because yeah. I was thinking about it. It was someone who had recently passed. And this is why, for whatever reason, in my head, I drew this parallel because as I was reading the obituary I'm, and then I read a pitch I'm like, OK, this is a list of everything that they've done in their life and their career and all these great things that happened before they passed away. And now I'm reading this pitch that says they went to school here and then they moved on to here for graduate school. And then they did this and then they did this and then they did this. And at no point in that pitch did it have anything to do with my show. Did it have anything to do with me and why I would find this person valuable? Nothing about what we would talk about. Nothing. It was one of the worst pitches I've ever seen. And it came from a PR company. So I reached out and said, hey, not sure if this was directly from you or from one of your agents. I could tell it was a one person show, but I wanted to make them feel good. 
think you know he might be bigger than he looks, but that's okay. Nothing wrong there. But I just want to say, listen, your 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 presentation really missed the mark because there's nothing in it that tells me what this person can bring to my podcast. And if I'm going to make a, a decision on whether I want to feature them as a guest, I need to know what we're going to talk about so I can make sure that it makes sense for my audience. So if you could take a minute to let me know that, but also. This is something that I do. I can help I can help you with this presentation and it's going to help your clients get more guest appearances as you make this outreach. The response I got was she's very sought after, don't you want her? To which I replied, don't. "No, I don't because no. I don't I cannot build a format around a list of accomplishments." And if you yeah. still after me stressing that I need to know what this person can bring to the table, you can't do that? No. To which he responded, well, let's just forget it then. I said, it's already forgotten, sir. And yeah. we're going to move on. But that, but that's the issue is that when you approach this with an entitlement mindset, mm. you in your head instantly think that every show you reach out to is the perfect fit for your client. And, you know, in a lot of ways, maybe it is, but it's not so much in the fact that they are. It's in the fact that your presentation doesn't showcase it. And if you can't get that part right, like I said, this is why I, I want to eradicate this as much as I possibly can, because this is what's costing good opportunities. And people that do have value to showcase aren't getting the opportunity because they can't get past step one. So that to me, you can tell how passionate I get about this because, again, not a complicated process. And it's all about flipping the script and making it more about the person you're reaching out to and not about yourself. All of your accolades are going to come up at some point in this process, but it doesn't need to be in the presentation. Yes. I mean, literally, mic drop. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> though, I've, it's so important because, like you said, there is prime real estate in guesting on mm -hmm. podcasts and showing up. Like you said before, you are in someone's ear. You are giving them value. And if they feel like, hey, wow, this was incredible. This changed my life. This helped me in some type of way, then they're going to go find you. They're going to go find out more about how they can connect with you, how they can listen to your podcast, how they can join your programs. Like yeah. it works, guys, but you have to be strategic and you can't yes. just say, hey, if I throw do this many podcast pitches, then I'm bound to get some. You want to get the right ones. And like I mentioned yeah. before, that client who was on a really aligned show and doubled her downloads, she had been pitching to other ones that were not as aligned before that and was like, well, then why would I focus on these? I need to be focusing on the ones that my ideal listener is listening to. And now she's able to be more strategic and say, hey, this is how I can help your audience because she's had those conversations, right? Once you're on the show, from a guesting standpoint, what do you recommend people do to make sure that they do show up as a expert in their field? It comes down to that abundance mindset and understanding what your role in creating this content is. It's not to sell, which is something that does throw a lot of people off. But when a podcaster is making that decision on whether they want to bring you on as a guest, they're probably not doing it because you're a slick salesperson. They're doing it because you've got a powerful message that's going to resonate with their audience and they know when they connect with you, good things will happen. But if you show up and it's like a heel turn in wrestling, you flip everything over and now you're going into sales mode trying to sell, sell, sell nonstop, it makes the content very difficult to listen to. And that's if it ever goes live at all. Because many podcasters, they know their audience enough to know that if I put a sales pitch in front of them for 30 minutes, they're going to get turned off and they may never come back. They may say, well, if this podcast is nothing more than somebody selling to me the whole time, I'm going to go find a show that doesn't do that. So now they're moving backwards in regards to growth and they're going to question why they ever connected with you in the first place. So bringing value to the microphone and using it as a platform to tell your story to network with a like-minded individual. And this is something that I like to focus on from the very beginning. Some people will come at this with the mindset of having to be in performance mode and mm -hmm. put on a show for everybody. But in reality, in the moment, as you're recording this podcast, it's you and another individual, maybe a couple if they have multiple hosts on the show. But for the most part, this is one-on-one. -on -one. This is a conversation. This is something that you would do with a friend at the coffee shop or at the bar over a drink. 
if you can get into that mindset that you don't have to get in interview mode and performance mode, you're going to be much more relaxed. Because when you think about an interview, two scenarios always come to mind for me. One is a job interview. And when you're going in for a job interview, there's always a certain feeling of this is uncertainty. What do I need to say to make sure I'm making the right impression so they choose me? So you're Mm -hmm. instantly in a different mindset altogether. Likewise, an interrogation is the other scenario, which is a little bit more extreme. But if you've got somebody shining a bright light on your face and asking where you were on March 31st at 1230 a.m., right. <laughs> you're all you're all freaked out. And again, it just it, it raises your stress levels. But if you come at this thinking that today I get to connect with Alicia and have a great conversation about a topic that I'm truly passionate about. So I'm going to get to pick her brain. She's going to pick mine. We're going to share insights. We're going to share ideas. And when it's all said and done, an audience of thousands, maybe millions of people is going to get to hear it, too. Mm -hmm. You're instantly putting yourself in a more relaxed frame of mind, which is going to allow you to tell your story in a much more compelling fashion. It's going to allow you to be more confident in what you're speaking about. And it's going to allow your insights to truly come through and your knowledge will shine. That can be enough and it will be enough to make sales for you. Maybe not today, but. When someone hears that podcast, if they like the cut of your jib, they love the message that you're bringing to the world. Their next step instinctively is to follow your call to action where they can get more value from you. So ideally, you want to bring them to your website where you can control the narrative and let them choose their adventure from there. Or maybe you have an opt in to where you can provide some value through a course or an email newsletter, whatever it may be. But from there, they can also look around jump to your social media if you link to that from your website. But ideally, the goal is to have a very relaxed conversation, bring value to the microphone in every way possible, tell your stories in a way that will resonate with the audience. So they're going to want more from you. It's like the trailer to a movie, right? Yeah. You don't get the whole movie when you see the trailer. You get a few minutes to get you pumped up. If you really like what you see, you go and you see the full length feature. That's what you're doing with your podcast guests or appearances. You are showing up with value to give them a little taste of why you are a resource that can help them get the transformation they seek. And if they resonate with that message, they're going to follow you to your website. Then it's up to you to walk them through the journey from there and turn them into a customer. Yeah, I've definitely had the experience where I actually told my team, hey, I asked this question. The guest pitched her program. And then I had to ask the question again, take all that out. Like that's not yeah. valuable to my audience. And then I right. end up having to cut and paste the conversation to yeah. make sure that it is valuable, which then doesn't allow that person to show up as their best self. So you're right. right. Come to it as a conversation, as giving value, tips, tricks, strategies about something you're passionate about, because it does come through mm-hmm. in the audio. People know. I get excited about podcasting because you can hear it in my voice. Like, I love talking about it. I can talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. So bring that same energy. I love that so much. You mentioned throughout the conversation that you have this course and you have resources. So as we wrap up, if you could let everyone know where they can find you, hang out with you, get to know more about what you're doing. Absolutely. Head over to jasoncircone.com. And from there, a couple things can happen. As I said, choose your adventure, right? If you want to know more about how to truly leverage the podcast medium and get the most from it as a guest, or even if you're looking for strategies to get more control and clarity over hosting your own show, I'm happy to help with both, but set up a discovery call so we can have a discussion about what your ideas are and all that will cost you is 30 minutes of your time. It's a free call. And also you can check out my new course, the five star guest pitch and That course was designed to eradicate a lot of those items we were talking about at the very beginning, Alicia. It's specifically designed to help you craft a valuable, very impactful guest presentation or guest pitch to get you those opportunities that you need. Like I said, if you can't get past step one, everything else is irrelevant. So getting your pitch dialed in, it's going to be the best few hundred dollars you've ever spent. If this is truly something that you want to master and get right, which, like I said, if you want to be a podcast guest, you've got to have this right. You've heard it from two podcasters today. Yes. We need your pitch and your presentation to stand out. So this course is designed to help you do just that. So it's all at jasoncircone.com. 
Awesome. And we'll make sure that we link that in the show notes for anyone who's driving or otherwise occupied and would like access to that. It'll also be on our website so you guys can grab that. Thank you so much, Jason. This was so valuable. And thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Alicia. It was a blast. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Listeners to Leads. If you found something in this episode valuable, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with a friend who you know would also get value from it. Want to send me a message? My favorite place to hang out is Instagram. You can find me at alicia.galati. Let me know what your favorite takeaway was from the episode. And don't forget, turning those listeners into leads is actually easy. 